This challenge is hard. For those of you just now tuning into this series, my name is Elvin Ninja 7, your resident Miss Weaver Monk, but in this series, we're taking all seven healer specs to 3000 Raider IO without even knowing the date that the season's going to end. So as you can imagine, there's a ton of World of Warcraft that we're going to have to be playing and a lot of editing that I'm going to be doing. So I'll go ahead and cut a deal with you guys. If you enjoy this video or enjoy this series, then like the video and share it with one of your healer friends. In the last episode, we cracked open vaults, did our Resto Shaman keys and our Holy Paladin keys, and now we have the Priest, Evoker, and Druid in this episode. Let's go ahead and get after it. And we resume our journey as Resto Druid. Now, last week I had mentioned that we might drop the whole cat weaving play style because yes, it's better, but it's gonna be more straining on the hands. And I decided to do that since we have seven healers to do. So uh, we also are gonna start off this journey with a trick shot. Now, haters are gonna say it's fake, but I'll let you guys decide that for yourself. No, seriously, though, we're starting to get to the level where people are better. I mean, watch this paladin clear spiders with his immunity. Just as our groups are getting better, I'm feeling more confident on each healer because I'm learning all the tricks. I'm really hyper focusing on it so they come to me quicker. However, it's causing my brain to scramble a bit. If we die here, that's actually insane. So we used everything in our, our tool book. Tool book? Every tool on our belt is what I think I was going for. But I said tool book. I just said tool book. Now, as we come up on two of the hardest pools in all of dungeons this season, I want to talk about something else. Like, yes, the groups are getting better, but there is a downside to that. There's this, like, I don't want to call it a phenomenon, but I'll just say that because it's the only word that comes to mind. But these players who are on alts and maybe are these really solid players with big IO mains, but like this paladin, he double pulls the dragons when the tank was just trying to single pull. And like, yes, we're used to it at higher keys, but um, I, I don't know. It's this stigma around like these alt players that come on their alts and kind of like smurf these keys. It's really annoying because I try to stay humble and let the tank go at their own pace. I don't pull for tanks in these keys but it's really annoying and it actually catches up to him in the next pool because he does the same exact thing and lo and behold, he dies for it. And it's just really obnoxious. And I really think it's these same people that um, maybe if he died one more time in the key, he would type a message like I got no healing and then like leave the key. I don't know, but it's just these like egos that people have. Guys, we're playing a video game, like calm down. But I don't know, I got, this guy's just having fun. Maybe I'm just putting this persona on him, but um, I don't know. I, to me, it's these same two things that keep reoccurring. But luckily, I'm getting the hang of Resto Druid, and you see me slam the healing on both of these pools. I wish I wasn't covering the meters, but I promise you guys, I was shooting up there. All right, we're just, you know what? We're literally just gonna be hotting. I didn't see which paladin that was on. Oh, it's this one. I think we have good hot setup when we flourish. We could, yeah, we could get like some damage off during that if we wanted to. But they are all stacked on Chromie. Also, I like that we went germination here because. I don't like that. That's pretty bad on my part, I think. Now, I really love this boss because I feel like it lets me showcase what I've learned in healing with Resto Druid. Now, those of you who have watched me for a long time probably know that this was my original main, but I really feel like I'm getting the hang of it again, and I hope that that showed in those last few pulls. But at the end of the dungeon, the max geared tank actually gets the leech pants. But every single time, ooh, the pants. And you bet your ass we went on an adventure to get those. Leech pants, here we go. 
As we move into Waycrest Manor, you guys are probably wondering who I've been talking to in these clips. Well, I'm actually streaming. I'm streaming a lot more often now on twitch.tv slash lbninja7. It's the same name as my YouTube, so feel free to come on over and hang out as we do these keys live. But also, this dungeon was pretty chill. I was with a four-man group who seemed to like me as their healer, and in this moment, I end up coming into this pool pretty late, and that's really bad as, as Restoration Druid, but I thought I was gonna die and luckily the paladin came to my saving grace. Oh, we gotta pop some CDs here. Uh-oh, you're definitely dying. Ooh, we got lay on hands right as I said that. But for the most part, this key felt very easy because of how much focus I'm putting on healing and kind of ignoring damage because guys, if we're just shooting for 3k, healer damage can not matter at that level. And we end up finishing the week off in Amurazan's Rise. Now, you guys can probably guess from looking at the meters, but it was almost like I got carried for most of the week on the Resto Druid keys. As much as I would try to avoid it, like uh, applying to low IO groups or stuff like that, it's just sometimes people just invite a Chad tank or Chad DPS, and, and you can't really fully avoid it unless you form the groups yourselves. Now, I, I mentioned this in last video, but I'm trying my hardest not to form groups myself because then I would have to take some time to push all five of my healers that I'm grinding, all of their keys up before I start forming the groups. So instead, we're just applying to random groups and, and growing our IO naturally that way. But I try to negate the effect of getting basically carried by doing all the mechanics that I can. Now, as we move over to the Evoker, I haven't even mentioned it yet, but this was still bursting weak. In a while back, I got a YouTube comment mentioning a tech where you can use stasis and dispel a couple people and then pop that stasis and basically have a mass dispel on Evoker. And yes, I do read all of my YouTube comments, so if you have any tech or tips, leave those down in the comments below. But we do decide to give that a try, and I honestly did not like it. You can stasis things like your Dispel or Cauterizing Flame, which I'm going to try to do on this key. Let's see how it works. I wonder if it's going to be better than actually healing the Bursting. We're going to try it, but I want to see if it works as a mass Dispel. Okay, here's what we're going to do. So we're first going to actually do some healing, but then we're going to cast Stasis, and then we're going to Dispel people. That's not good. We're letting cast go off. Then we're going to pop the stasis. It's going to dispel those people again. I don't know what the plan was there. We lost so many people. And I was testing, so that was partly my fault, but we got up to nine stacks there. Yes, yeah, stasis can be used as like a pseudo mass dispel. Which is cool. I don't know if it's worse or if it's better than just healing. Now, at the start of the season, I said that Evoker was probably my favorite non Mistweaver Monk healer. However, after playing it for a couple of weeks, even, I haven't even been playing this that much, but after playing it for a few episodes of this series, I start to notice what you guys are talking about, what you guys all complain about with this spec, and that is just the awkwardness or clunkiness of your range and how your main heal dream breath is like a frontal, and then how your main spot heal kind of can put you out of place unless you just echo them and then do it on yourself. It's just very weird. The positioning of this class is honestly almost a nightmare. So you see me in a couple of these keys asking like my ranged DPS to just stand in front of me, and luckily they do. But the maze goes well, we come up on Morchi. I kind of do a trick shot where I go over Morchi using my, my like fire breath spell, and we end up having to kill her with just three people alive. But luckily we do a ton of damage for a healer, and the three of us that were alive know the mechanics. Drop our clone there. I'm actually gonna leash mine all the way over here to give the tank the close one. The mage is dead, but let's be real. We knew that, that was gonna happen.
Well, that saved us from the frontal, though. Did my range. Three, two, one. Dude, the range on this class sucks ass. I see why people always complain about it. How's it going, dog bones? Appreciate you coming out. We might get nuked here. Zero. Just in time. If I was a, uh, if I had a few boxes ticked, if I was a bigger YouTuber, like a bigger content creator, and I was an Evoker main, I, you bet your ass I would name my kid Justin Time. First and middle name. So it's probably good that I'm not a, an Evoker main. Whoa. Let's see if we get anything. Hey, nice. Oh, but I already have Iridol. Yeah, it really sucks how the only pieces of gear that I'm getting on the Evoker, which is one of the only healers that has a good staff, is staffs or one-handed weapons. But anyways, as we move into this Throne of the Tides, I want to talk about something that I've noticed with Evoker, or at least through playing it through these lower keys. A lot of times, since your tier set applies smaller echoes, uh, a lot of times you just get into this rotation where you have a ton of echoes out, but sometimes you just don't have anything good to spin them on. Uh, so like you'll, you'll apply a bunch of small echoes and you just end up throwing away a reversion just because you need to spin them. Now also on this end of the gauntlet, I had to show you guys that temporal anomaly. It feels so bad having some of your main healing spells be frontals. It's like, do you hit the melee? Do you hit the ranged? Man, just stack in melee if you're a ranged player with an evoker because we are crippled. Since I'm feeling very confident with the evoker, we end up taking down that Throne of the Tides with, with a lot of ease and also this Atal Dazar. Now, as we move into Everbloom, I just wanna show you guys what I mean by feeling confident. This boss is very difficult. It requires a ton of healing and just know-how with the boss and how to it, like maneuver your healer kit. But what you'll see me doing is a lot of times I just straight up AFK. Like during the downtime, if I accidentally apply echoes with my tier set, for example, I will sit on those echoes and, and not waste them because the damage that's about to come in is more important. And I feel like I'm really getting this class down, at least in a Mythic Plus environment. I wonder if it would be fun to take it into a raiding environment. But with us having to do both pre-specs, both Holy and Discipline, getting them both to 3000 IO, like I've said in the past episodes, I've had to make sort of a game plan. How am I going to go about Priest? Am I going to get them both going at the same time? And uh, the, the game plan that I've landed on is to just rush like Blitz 1 to 3k because that way it would be geared and make the other one to 3k easier. You see there... Ultimate Penitence kind of messes me up. I love that spell, but it's probably my main gripe with Disc Priest. Um, it's just that Ultimate Penitence is just very awkward. It's like you're up in the sky. How can things melee you? How can Swirlies hit you? Anyways, so the game plan is I'm going to play Disc Priest and Blitz it to 3k because they are the most, you know, quote unquote, meta healer. And then once I'm fully geared and fully to 3k, I'll come back and do Holy Priest toward the end. However, these Disc Priest keys are actually the hardest ones I'm doing. I, I guess it's just because I haven't played this spec since the rework, really. But I used to feel so confident in my Disc Priest play, but now it feels kind of bad it feels like i'm bad with this class and it doesn't help that this tank runs the tree boss over the fire three times almost back to back to back so just i mean just a complete shit show but nonetheless it's a learning curve i just have to pick up this class and come into it knowing that i am not good with this class anymore and i just need to relearn the basics i keep using my radiance charges at bad points i need to hold them for the damage phase but also, it's like, come on, dude, we don't need another... Why are we walking them over fire every time? Yeah, so I was ripping Radiances left and right on bosses, but I found that it's just a lot better to like hold on to them for a few seconds. If I need to reapply Atonement to one or two people during that downtime, then do that. 
but just saving them for big major damage instances is just better. Another big basic that I needed to get a lot better with was ripping mass dispel. I guess just Mistweavers train me to just heal through and power through big uh, bursting stacks. But as a, a Discipline Priest or a Priest in general, I just need to get comfortable sending this cooldown, especially on pools like this where they burst a lot. But hopefully this next clip shows you that I have absolutely mastered the Mindbender ramp. Oh, you troll. Literally, there's my mind bender. Take me. Oh my goodness. Probably that has to go down as top 10 mind bender windows you've ever seen. I kind of don't want to mass this spell here. I would, I would rather. Uh, we just, we just send it. What have we learned? That was a good master spell. I'll take credit for that one. That was a good one. It hit like right at the perfect time. You know what, Chris? Good for you. You do take credit for that one. Guys, I'm actually very happy with my discipline this week. Discipline. Discipline priest. There's the joke. Write it down. But like I said earlier, there is one thing that has consistently disappointed me as much as it is my favorite cooldown in the game right now and that is Ultimate Penitence. We're just gonna Ultimate Penitence. I don't care if I get hit. Be like, yeah, you do take damage and, and Swirlies do go under you. I was about to say, but they don't kill you, but that one did. <laughs> I literally was about to eat my words. But guys, that's gonna do it for this week. We overall made a ton of progress because I was targeting keys that I had not done yet, needed some IO for. And not having all these drama-filled groups where someone leaves and wastes our time this week actually made us fly through keys. And overall, everyone that I played with was very enjoyable. But as you're seeing on screen, I'm showing a quick little slideshow of all the IO that we gained on each of these characters after completing all of these dungeons. And we made some huge strides in the IO journey this week. Although we're still kind of behind on gear, I think that's okay. But I do want to ask you guys, if you're still watching, what do you guys think about me crafting gear on these characters? On one hand, it would jump us ahead in item level, but on the other hand, that could be a bad thing for you guys. You guys might want this natural growth process. However, crafting gear is part of the end game, so it's up to you guys. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. But also, since this is the end of this week, we do get to come up on my second favorite part of the week, just behind opening all these vaults, and that is seeing the full progress of these healers. So this is where we started off the week and this is where we have gotten to. Overall, so much growth. You guys can really see these bars move and I am so happy with the series and with our progress so far. Next week, we're going to have to look to tackle some bigger keys, but I have a lot going on in my personal life outside of WoW, so next week might be an off week, really, where we barely get much done, but we're really going to hit the paint really hard in the next coming weeks because we might be running out of time. Once again, we don't know when the season's going to end, so it's, it's a race first, the invisible clock. We got to get going. But once again, I'll stream most of these keys live on Twitch with you guys because I love hanging out with y'all during this series. So go check out my Twitch if you haven't already. Go hit follow, go give your Prime sub, whatever you guys want to do, go do that now. The link is in the description and also the Patreon link is in the description. Guys, this is taking up so much time. So if you want to support this series or just support me trying to live out my dream as a full-on content creator, then check out that Patreon link because there are a ton of different patron tiers. And speaking of patrons, these guys are the ones on the screen. They are the people that are keeping this channel alive. So thank you so much from the bottom of my heart for checking out my Patreon. But guys, that's going to do it for episode three of this journey. I am so excited and I really think this is possible. It's hard. It really is. It takes a lot of time and a lot of skill that we honestly just don't have yet. So it's going to be a slog, especially toward the end, but I'm excited to take on this journey with you guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed it, hit like. If you want to see more from me, hit subscribe. And feel free to share this with a friend. It would really go a long way. But guys, speaking of going a long way, I'm going to go downstairs and eat some food. So I'll see you guys in the next episode. Until then, 
Take care.